Hello and welcome to Health Exposure. What can I say? Tonight is arteriosclerosis, a very important show and a lot of good information. So as you know, my number one guest is on, Deborah Arneson. Hi, Deborah. How are you doing? I'm good, Kurt. How are you doing? Well, pretty good. I know usually we, we are very close. We get to smile. We talk about things, but this is kind of a serious subject, and a lot of people suffer from this and have symptoms, and you brought a plethora of information along just to tell us about. I and did. I deliberately wrote these questions down because there's no way I could remember all this. Well, and, and um, same here. There's a, there are yeah. many different presenting symptoms that go with arteriosclerosis and plaque buildup and formation in the arteries. So you need to be aware because it, almost like blood pressure, it is the silent disease. It really doesn't present itself until it's almost too late, and then mm. you have a stroke. And all of a sudden you're like, well, jeepers, I must have plaque formation if I just had a stroke. So what we want to do here tonight is to educate people and tell them these are different things they can look out for that give them symptomatology or warning signs that there is some plaque buildup in different areas of the body. And we can't get into all of it tonight. We'll probably do a second show on this, Kurt, but we'll give them some tests they can do. One of the things I want to do, I want to tell people to try to grab a pencil and a paper and mm -hmm. there'll be some notes you may want to take on this show and there are some uh, recipes and things that Deborah plans on telling you. Well, let's see how I'm going to start this off, Deborah. Deborah, what are the major causes for plaque buildup of the arteries and the onset of strokes? Well, interestingly enough, Kurt, it's primarily the American, typical American diet. So we're looking at high saturated fat, high sugar content, a lot of stress, chemicals that come from the air that we breathe and chemicals that are found in our foods and you know additives things like that as well as no exercise heavy metal toxicity also mm -hmm. contributes to plaque formation um, low fiber uh, again sodium fluoride which is found in most of our water supplies and birth control pills my goodness mm -hmm. my goodness what are some symptoms of arteriosclerosis which is plaque buildup in the arteries well, there are so many that I'm actually going to list them off you. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'd like to actually dedicate the show to my grandpa, my oh, grandpa Bolter. He actually had a stroke about three days ago. and How's he doing, Deborah? He's improving, actually. Good. You know, I'll get up there this weekend and start doing my little voodoo nutrition on him and helping him along. But he really was under the management of a physician. Um, so I assume that he was being controlled. He had a, a little petite, petite uh, stroke maybe six months ago. He fell off a ladder, and we thought maybe the ladder was the cause of it. But then he was having trouble walking, and one of the major signs is uh, pain in the calves with exercise or walking. Hmm. That's primary, as well as high blood pressure. I see. As well as forgetfulness, as well as hearing loss. And you know he has all of those. And of course he's 91, and you attribute some of that to age. But he has not been feeling good for a while, so I love you, Grandpa. This is for you. All right, okay, that's so we're going to do some doctoring here tonight. Hopefully, well, good, not only for good. him, but for everybody. That's so. wonderful. Yeah. So basically, there are a number of things. Being overly tired after eating. Now, let me, you know, say, Kurt, that a lot of people go long periods of time without eating. So if you sit down and you miss, or you miss actually two meals, like skip breakfast and have a very late lunch at two or three and you eat too much food, chances are you're going to be extremely tired. That's not the same thing. Somebody who eats steadily, like my grandpa, you know, he eats three meals a day no matter what, same time every day, probably the same food every day, um, but he does get really sleepy and he falls asleep after eating. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign of arteriosclerosis. Forgetfulness beyond the norm. Now everybody worries about forgetfulness, so if it comes down to details such as you forget the things you normally remember, then that's a sign. If you forget things that, you know, you just haven't committed to memory or not, you know, something that you do by rote every day, you know, it's not a consistent part of your life not to worry as much. Um, cannot grasp new ideas. That's also another symptom. Uh, persistent weakness and coldness, especially tingling in the extremities or numbness in your feet and your hands. That's uh, primary. Dull headaches. Any age? Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure, you're seeing more and more kids with high cholesterol, um, which also leads to, you know, plaque formation. It's, it's a sticky, gooey, it's called ADP, AD, ADP, it's adenoid diphosphate, and it, it's a combination of blood and um, this fibrous component that, that makes the blood real gummy, mm -hmm. and it 
causes plaque formation in the body. So different things preempt that, and we'll get into the details on things in the diet again in, in more detail that will actually preempt you to creating sticky platelets, you know, or aggregation of your platelets in the bloodstream. My goodness. So dull headaches, tightness in your chest, mm -hmm. and some of these cross over into other symptoms too, so you need to be kind of a savvy consumer and just really watch and listen to your body. Pain in your shoulders. So if you have a very striking pain in your shoulders, my mom... Again, we're talking about my family here, had a very, very searing pain in her right shoulder last week. And she called the doctor and he said, oh, you're fine. You know, it's not your heart. But I worry about her because she has very high levels of aluminum. We've tested her and, and we're in the process of pulling that out. But that could be part of the problem. Um, pain in your calves when you're walking, which we already talked about. Sharp pain in the sternum when you get up in the morning and you stretch or when you exercise after a good fitful night of sleep. If you do the stretch and you get a pain right here in the sternum area. Mm -hmm. um, ulceration of the skin, ankles and feet. You know, that would mean developing a sore or something or you have ulcers in different places that are not healing. That means there's no blood flow going to the system. Sudden spells of deafness. And, of course, some of those might be, you know, preferred deafness. <laughs> That's right. Well, how say do you, you never hear me? You've just described a male audience. <laughs> and, <laughs> and blurred or darkened vision, hmm. where things seem to almost get a blackout or they get real blurry. Hmm. So all of that can be preemptive or kind of like signals that are triggering that there's not enough blood flow going on to different parts of the body. And you I can guess. have blockages in different areas. It could be from the neck up, from the you know, sternum area down to the waist, and for the hips on down to the legs. So we're going to give you some tests to do here in a little bit to see if you have problems in different areas. Did you see her smile? <laughs> I <laughs> saw her smile. <laughs> she It'll looked at me fun. and said, there were certain tests. Mm -hmm. All right, the first signs of plaque buildup in the arteries are not easily recognized. As I understand, symptoms of advanced arteriosclerosis are when a person takes very small steps and has to rest every 100 to 200 yards due to pain in the feet and legs. Mm -hmm. What illnesses might this condition present prior to uh, this being stricken? Being stricken with arteriosclerosis, asthma is a symptom, heart trouble, high blood pressure, loss of memory, sleep, hearing, and eyesight problems. So mm -hmm. if your vision is dimming very rapidly, your hearing seems to be coming in and out a lot. Um, leg pain of any sort that's persistent. Liver, kidney, and lymph trouble. So people who have a lot of congestion and they end up with swollen lymph nodes or they have trouble with liver congestion. Their enzymes might be elevated on a chem screen or blood test or their bilirubins might be um, elevated. So it could also be prostate problems, meaning there's not enough flow getting to the prostate. And of course, stroke, which is like a big knock upside the head with a bat. Mm. So those are all preemptive um, or basically signals that there's something occluded or blocked somewhere in the system. Asthma. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. And asthma is on the rise. You know, again, we'll come back to what we were saying earlier, talking about kids. You know, I, I'm doing blood tests on kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old, and they have high cholesterol. I just did a 10-year-old little boy, and the doctor's like, what does he need a cholesterol test for? I said, mm, let's just do one. So we did it, and his cholesterol was almost 190. My goodness. Exorbitantly high for a 10-year-old, and this kid's a vegetarian. He doesn't eat meat, he doesn't eat saturated fats um, from animal meats. He eats a lot of hydrogenated fats mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. junk food. French fries, fried foods. Someone like mentioned that. today they said something. They said, I'm a vegetarian, but I'm a junk food vegetarian. And I said, right. What do you mean? And they said, Well, <laughs> because I can't get to the proper diet. So therefore, rather than eat meat, I just eat anything I can get my hands on. <laughs> a non -discerning, discerning vegetarian. That's I would right. Say. I, I like, said, hmm. Yeah, well, that's good. And that's why you're in here seeing me today. So they come in with cold hands and feet and wonder what's going on. This could be a sign of arteriosclerosis. Sure. Nine times out of ten, um, you'll find that people who have that problem, first of all, their circulation is diminished. If they you know, start consuming healthy oils in their diet, pure cold-pressed oils, and that doesn't diminish, then there is a blockage. Mm -hmm. You know, if it takes them a little bit longer, but you know, when I balance people's diets, we also do lots of fiber, which scrubs away plaque. So, you know, that plaque circulates once you start losing weight or you dump more fat into the system. You better have fiber there present to pull that garbage out of the system because the arteries and veins will develop plaque formations. If, in fact, your diet's been less than optimal, low in fiber, high in junk or processed foods, high in metals like from coffee, you know, 
especially when you perk it in that aluminum pot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Why do you always look at me when you say coffee? I I, I don't know why she does it. You saw her look at me. I have thousands of people out there who saw you He's look at me. Guilty. I don't know what's up with that. But we I should merely probably bathe in coffee. Good. <laughs> you, you like coffee. We should probably cut away to the plaque um, poster over there on the on the right lower quadrant of that poster. Bill, can you manage to get in on that? Um, basically, if you look at the upper. It looks like an oval there, and that's actually an artery. The, the one on top with the pink showing is a healthy artery, and the one below that is loaded with gooey, gummy plaque formation. And obviously, if you've got that amount of plaque on the lower quadrant of an artery, then you're going to have increased pressure of blood flow. So you'll see people, I had a client who came in the other day, and his blood pressure was 280 over 210. And he had no idea. He doesn't like to go to doctors. I'm like, you go to the doctor tomorrow. You know, go get your blood pressure checked. I mean, it's very nerve-wracking. So, I mean, he obviously has some plaque formation, much like the one on the lower right quadrant there. And that's very concerning. Can you get rid of it? Yes. You know, after a lifetime of eating poorly, it's going to be harder the older you are, the longer it takes to turn things around. But mm -hmm. with direct application, you know, and um, constantly working at it, you can undo this. I, I mean, Kurt, I see month after month, you know, clients who come in who are really not well and they have high blood pressure and I tried to talk one of my clients into coming tonight his name is James and he's brought his blood pressure down from exceptionally high in the course of about four months to a normal low blood pressure hmm. he was on three antidepressants when he started with me and we just did it with diet and a little bit of exercise he still doesn't exercise a lot but he was on three antidepressants and two drugs to sleep because the antidepressants disturbed his sleep and all of those medications have heavy metals now when you start, you know, misaligning the system with things like chemicals and metals and lots of pollution and stress, I mean, this man was also exposed to Agent Orange. So who knows what that did to his system. Oh, my goodness. It does affect the autonomic nervous system. So, um, so we know, do know that, I mean, with Agent Orange? There is a test. I don't implement it in my practice. But he was exposed to it. So you just assume the worst rather than costing him a pile of money and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. doing certain tests. Um, I do just basic standardized tests on people to start, and that's usually enough. If you give them more information than that, they're terribly overwhelmed, and, you know, it's like, where do you begin with somebody who doesn't even know how to clear out their arteries, you know? Let's clear the arteries out, get the blood pressure down, and get you some energy. Let's go find some energy here, and that's how you go about doing that. That's so. incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Hmm. So, what should a person do? Well... Clean out their arteries. Okay. Let's go scrub. Yes. Let's so, go scrub. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about specific nutrients that target um, the cleaning of the arteries. But the way you do that from a dietary vantage point is really basic. And I know a lot of our viewing audience here have, has heard this information over and over. The basic premise for most problems from a therapeutic standpoint using foods as healing agents is the same. It's not unusual. It's, you know, there's a few modifications, but you know, don't skip your feedings. Make sure you regulate all of your hormones by giving the body at least three to five, six feedings a day. A minimum of three for everybody. Mm. You know, if you have a really stressful day, then you need more food more frequently in smaller portions. And make sure you balance proteins to fats and carbohydrates. Lose saturated fat. You know, saturated fat, for those of you who don't know, comes from animal byproducts, dairy products, things like that, and from those hydrogenated oils that are found in processed fast foods. So lose the saturated hydrogenated oils in your diet. Do more of the unsaturated oils. Do fish three or four days a week. Mm. You know, do poultry two days and maybe a red meat like buffalo or venison or something one day, which is low in cholesterol and it's low in saturated fat. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. Do more fiber. You know, the Americans consume five to 10 grams of fiber a day. It's pathetic. We need, just to move our bowels, forget about cleaning your arteries, at least 30 to 35 grams a day. And you can accomplish that solely by consuming like four pieces of fruit a day and maybe two to four cups of steamed vegetables a day, mm -hmm. lightly steamed. That's not that much, but not many people do it. That alone will give you about 20 to 25 grams of fiber. And if you're going to eat carbohydrates that come from starchy sources, you know, focus on like, the skin on potatoes providing their organic and whole grain rices and whole grain breads not the processed brown berries that has hydrogenated oil in it hmm. you know look at your labels make sure there's no hydrogenated fat that keeps that food stable on the shelf for life that's it i'll just have to bring my glasses to the grocery <laughs> you store do. 
You and, do. You uh, have to be a proactive consumer. It's so consumer. fascinating, though. You know.